Good evening to everyone. Thank you for taking the opportunity to join us tonight. Tonight, let me just do a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Then we'll get into the word because I had a couple of people say some things to me. Listen, we're here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you miss it, know that the same night it's uploaded on YouTube under Gary Partee. So if you miss it here, you can always, at 6 Pacific Standard Time, you can always catch it. it all, it's always uploaded later that evening on YouTube. But tonight, I want to speak to those people. I want you to listen because I'm so thankful to God for giving us this understanding at this time. And I want you to listen carefully because this is truly for those that have been speaking to the Lord concerning what's going on in their bodies. And tonight, the Lord's going to speak expressly to those that have been beseeching him and petitioning him concerning the things that are going on in their bodies, as well as parents that have children that have things going on in their body. This word is specifically for you to give you an understanding of what the Lord is doing at this time. So I need you just to listen tonight. Listen, listen, listen listen. And here, do this. Go through the scriptures and listen to the things that God is teaching so that you may judge righteously. Judge righteously that you are not deceived by someone who erroneously or deceitfully comes in the name of the Lord. All of this is for your sake to, to cause you to not be deceived. So get your, uh, Bible, and we're going to go to uh, Exodus 23, and we're going to read verses 23 through 25. Exodus 23, 23 through 25. So when you have your Bibles, we'll uh, begin to pray and then get into the Word of God. Amen? So let's pray. God, we thank you for your Word. We thank you for what you're doing in this moment as we look forward to this season, God. God, these are your people, you know, their hearts, their minds, their concerns, every fear that they have, God, every hope that they have. So, God, do now only what you can do. Speak to their situation according to your knowledge of their hearts. Allow them to find a confidence. God, we thank you for the word. Let it rain in this moment. We bless you right now in the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Exodus 23. Verses 23 through 25. Listen to what it says. And for my for mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. The place of deliverance. The place of deliverance. And let's start with verse number 23. Listen to what it says. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Parasites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Understand, this is, the, the Lord has decreed right here that this is his time to give you this understanding of his kingdom. Please understand, this is his time to give you this understanding of his kingdom. And this is according to the Lord's delight in his servant. Please understand, this is according to his delight in his servant. And what the Lord, listen to the scripture, he desires for you to understand is how he will plant you in the place of blessing or the place of covenant. Understand, his heart is to give you an understanding of how he will plant you in the place of blessing or the place of covenant. And understand, when the Lord delights in you, he, by his spirit or by, or by his 
by his spirit, he commands his spirit or his angel to work on your behalf to bring you in to possess the place of blessing or the place of covenant. I'm going to say it again. When the Lord delights in you, he commands his spirit to work on your behalf to bring you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant. This is how the Lord plants you in the place of blessing or the place of covenant. Now, let me give you a, a few witnesses, but here's what I want you to understand. What it takes for the Lord to call, command his spirit, and his spirit is merely nothing more than his angels. What it takes for the Lord to command his angels to work on your behalf is for him to delight in you. But how the Lord plants you in the place of blessing or the place of covenant is by commanding his spirit to work on your behalf to bring you into to possess the place of blessing or the place of covenant. Let me give you a few witnesses. First place I want to go is let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Go to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Listen to this. Watch this. Verse number, listen, listen to this. What do I do? I want to throw in verse 6 through 8. I'm going to, throw, I'm going to read 6, then I'm going to read 8. Listen to 6. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search is exceeding is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us in unto this land and give it us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So how does the Lord plant me in the place of blessing or in the place that he will establish his covenant with me? He does it according to his delight in me by commanding his spirit to work on my behalf to bring me in and cause me to possess it. Let me give you another witness. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Understand, the Lord plants you by commanding his spirit to work on your behalf to bring you into the place of blessing and bring you into the place of covenant. But it is by his spirit. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Remember what he said to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by what? My spirit. And I'm going to get to that in a moment, but let me give you another witness. Watch now. Watch verse number seven. The Lord always brings you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant. Verse seven, Deuteronomy eight. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. The only way you get into a good land. And what is a good land? It is a place that only God can bring you into. And the only way you get into it is the Lord brings you into it by his spirit. So now understand, the Lord brings you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant by his spirit according to his delight in you. Let me give you another witness. 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 20. 2 Samuel chapter 20. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 20. And I want you to listen to a man that the Lord testified was a man after his own heart. What does it mean to be a man after God's own heart? It means to be a man that through the serving the Lord, through keeping his commandments, the Lord forms in him a heart that's pleasing in his sight. Therefore, his heart is something after the Lord's own hands. Therefore, it's something that is after his own heart. According to his heart, has he created in David or formed in David a faith that is pleasing in his sight? That's what it means to be a man after God's own heart. It is to be someone that God, according to his heart, forms in them a faith that is pleasing in his sight. So listen to David as he gives you an understanding of godliness according to his faithfulness. Listen to him. 2 Samuel chapter 20. He says this. He says, watch. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. He brought me forth also into a large place. 
And the purpose he brought him into this place was because he delighted in him. And that large place was the room of king. The Lord, by his spirit, according to his delight in David, brought him into the room of king that he could bless him and establish his covenant with him. Because the place of of blessing for David was being king, but he obtained the kingship by the spirit of the Lord, according to his delight in him. So by him commanding his spirit to work on David's behalf, he brought him into the room of king or the place of blessing or the place that he would establish his covenant with him according to his delight in him. Are you understanding? Watch, let me keep getting, let me give you the one more witness. First Kings chapter 10. First Kings chapter 10. Watch this. First Kings chapter 10. Listen now. I want you to listen. Listen to the queen. Listen to the queen of Sheba. First Kings chapter 10, verse number nine. She says, listen, blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen to the queen. She says, blessed be the Lord thy God, which delights in you and sets you on the throne. But in order for the Lord to set Solomon on in the room of king, it had to be by his spirit. But he only works on your behalf by commanding his spirit to work for you according to his delight in you. So he, according to his delight in Solomon, commanded his spirit to put him in the room of king or the place of blessing so that the Lord, according to his delight in him. So the Lord, according to his delight in Solomon, brought him into the place of blessing or the place that he would establish his covenant with him. Are you understanding? Because this is how heaven works. Now understand this. In order for the Lord to bless you, he has to plant you. Hear me. In order for the Lord to bless you, he has to plant you. The blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. You want me to say it one more time? Let me say it. The blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. And let me give you a few witnesses. In order for the Lord to bless you, he has to plant you in the place that he chooses. Understand. So therefore, the blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. And let me give you some witnesses. And this is, just listen as we continue to go. It's going to give you great understanding. First place I want to go is Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Now listen to this. This is a foundational truth. Hear me. If the Lord is going to bless you, he first must plant you in the place that he chooses. And he plants you according to his delight in you that he commands his spirit to work on your behalf to bring you into the place that you will possess that he will bless you or establish his covenant with you. Let me show it to you. I got a few places. First place, Genesis chapter 2. Listen to verse number 7 and 8. And the Lord, formed, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Listen, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So listen to the Lord. He's teaching. He's teaching. So the Lord, according to his delight, in the, his servant, planted him in the place of blessing. This is how the kingdom of heaven works. The Lord, according to his delight in him, commanded his spirit to bring him into uh, to the place of blessing or the place of covenant to possess it. Are you understanding? Heaven commands its spirit to work on your behalf according to its delight in you to plant you in the place of blessing. Let me give you another witness. Let me give you another witness. Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Watch. And then I'm going to go backwards. Psalms I'm, chapter 1. I want you to see this. Psalms chapter 1. 
Listen, listen, you've read it a thousand times. You just weren't really listening to it. Listen to this. Watch this. Verse number one, listen to what it says. Blessed, blessed. This is the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Watch. And he shall be like a tree planted. Wait a minute. For the Lord to bless you, he has to plant you. Are you hearing? And he plants you by his spirit. How does he plant you in the place of blessing? He commands his spirit or his angel to work on your behalf to bring you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant. This is the way of the kingdom of heaven. Right here in Exodus 23, he's teaching these people his ways. He needs them to understand how he puts them in the place of blessing. Let me help somebody real care carefully. Watch this. You don't choose the place of blessing. The Lord God chooses the place of blessing. And you are led to the place of blessing by keeping his commandment. He puts you or brings you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant by his spirit according to his delight in you. Are you hearing me? This is how the kingdom of heaven works. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Let me give you another witness. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Watch now. Listen. Jeremiah chapter 17. Listen now. Listen. 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 Watch this. Watch. Watch. Verse 7 and 8. Listen to what it says. It says, blessed. This is the blessing of the Lord. Is the man that trusteth in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, and shall neither, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Wait a minute, watch this. Once again, the blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord, and the Lord plants you in the place that he chooses to bless you by his spirit, according to his delight in you. Are you understanding? Whenever, the, whenever you see the spirit of the Lord working on behalf of someone, it is a sign to you of the Lord's delight in them. Let me make this plain. I just got to say this out loud. Understand, if you do not understand the ways of the kingdom of heaven, then you cannot judge heavenly things. But if you understand the ways of the kingdom of heaven, when you see the spirit of the Lord working on behalf of someone, it is a sign to you that the Lord delights in this individual and that this is his servant. Immediately, you should understand that what applies to that servant is the righteousness of the covenant, which is no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper and every time that shall come into condemnation of them shall be judged. So understand, he's teaching the people. This is how I put, bring you into the place of blessing or the place of covenant, that the blessing of the Lord, hear this, the blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. And you see it here in three different places I've shown you. I'm going to give you one last witness and then I'm going to move on. Watch this. Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Watch now. Watch Genesis chapter 20. It's subtle and I'm going to show it to you. Genesis chapter 20. And remember, these things are not just here to be here. They're here to give you an understanding of how the kingdom of heaven works. Listen to this. Watch this. Watch. I'm going to Genesis chapter 20. I'm going to read verse 3. Listen. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. So the Spirit of God is working on Abraham's behalf. Correct? Now watch. Listen carefully. Watch. This is according to his delight in Abraham. And listen to what, what the king says to Abraham in verse 15. He says, no, no, no. Let me read 7. 
Verse number seven says, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If thou shalt, if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Then listen to what Abimelech says in 15. And Abimelech says, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleases you. But Abimelech is only giving Abraham the land according to the commandment of the Lord by his spirit. And his spirit is working on Abraham's behalf to plant him. And the Lord is planting him in the place that he will bless him. So understand, in order for the Lord to bless you, the blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. Are you understanding? The blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. And we're going to get deeper and give you understanding. But understand, the blessing of the Lord requires the planting of the Lord. And the Lord desires for the remnant to understand the ways of the kingdom of heaven. That when they see them, they will set them heart, their hearts on them. And according to the Lord's delight in his servant. He will send his spirit before him to bring him into the place that he has chosen to bless him and to establish his covenant with him that you may know and believe the, in the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven. Let's keep going. Watch this. Let's keep going. Listen to this. Listen. Let's keep going. Watch this. Listen to what he says. He says, Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Understand, as the Lord is exalting, he is teaching you his ways. As he is exalting, he is teaching you his ways. First thing to understand, that land is is a part of the blessing of the Lord or the covenant of the Lord. Land is a part of the blessing of the Lord or the and the covenant of the Lord. And let me establish this truth for you real quick. Watch, foundational, Genesis 17. Watch this, Genesis 17. Listen now, listen, verse 7 and 8. Land is a part of the blessing of the Lord or a, the covenant of the Lord. Listen to what he says to Abraham. He says, verse 7, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. So now wait a minute. Watch this. This is a generational covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. And so people don't get it misconstrued. Hear me. Because people would try to say, well, we're in, watch this. That, that's the old covenant. Wait a minute. That, that doesn't apply now. Stop. Let me help you. A child of Abraham is a child of faith. The way I become a child of Abraham is that I am a child of faith. And this is an everlasting covenant unto a thousand generations. And a thousand generations has not even come close to being completed. So therefore, understand, listen to the Lord. He says that I will establish my covenant between thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and thy seed after thee the land. Wait a minute. The land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be your God. Understand, land is part of the covenant. Land is part of the blessing of the Lord. Are you understanding? Because by giving you or planting you in the place that he chooses, he gives you an understanding that the earth is his. Watch. That's just one way that he does. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Listen now. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse number 13. Listen to what it says. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swore to thy fathers 
to give thee. Wait a minute. Once again, he will do all of thee. He, watch this. He will bless thee in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. So therefore, hear me. Land is part of the blessing of the Lord. He plants you in the place that he chooses to bless you. And understand, the big word, go back to 23. The big word in this scripture is God, is their gods. Hear me, circle that word for me. Their gods. Because understand this, when the Lord delights in you, he will always give you the land that is in the hand or that is occupied by those that are serving other gods so that him giving it to you by his spirit, he will be glorified in you as God of gods. I'm going to say it again. When the Lord delights in you, he will always by his spirit give you land that is in the hand of someone else or that is occupied by those that are serving other gods that he, through giving it to you by his spirit, may be glorified in you as God of gods, and that there is none else beside him. Are you understanding? The Lord will never give you barren, watch this, he will never give you land that is not in someone else's possession. He will never give you land that is not occupied by someone that is serving another God. Are you hearing me? He will always give you land that is in the hand or that is occupied by someone that is serving another God. That through giving it to you by his spirit, he is glorified as God of gods and that there is none else beside him. Are you understanding? Let me give you a few witnesses so you can get this. First place I want to go is Isaiah chapter 45. Watch this. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Let's go to Isaiah 45. Watch this. Listen to this. Verse number 14. Listen. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be yours. Watch this. And they, they shall, watch this, they shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. So wait a minute, wait a minute. The Lord is going to cause you to possess the labor and the merchandise of someone else. But what is the criteria in order for him to take from someone else and give to you? The, the Watch this. It is according to his delight in you that he is causing you to possess the increase of those that serve other gods, that the reward you receive is the knowledge that he is God of gods and that there is none else beside him. Are you understanding how heaven works? When it comes time to reward your faithful service, the Lord judges the entire earth. He judges those that serve God and he judges those that don't serve God. So those that serve God, he will take from those that are serving other gods and by his spirit cause you to possess it that he may be glorified in you as God of gods and give you knowledge that there is none else or no other God beside him. That's why this scripture is written this way. Listen to him. He says, Thus said the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians men of stature shall come over unto thee, and it shall be yours. Listen to this. They shall fall down unto thee, and they shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. So hear me. Listen now. I'm going to say this one more time. If you increase yourself by your hand, then you rob yourself of the true knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. Yet, those in whom the Lord delights, he gives them an understanding and clarity and truth about the kingdom of heaven. And hear me, 
when the Lord, when you, when the Lord delights in you, he will always give you land or cause you to possess land that is in the hand of someone else or that is, uh, that's in the hand or that is occupied by those that are serving other gods. Are you hearing me? That through you receiving it by his spirit, hear this, working on your behalf, he's glorified in you as God of gods, and there is none else beside him. Let me give you another witness, Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch now, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Watch, watch this. What are you do? What are you do for faithfully serving the Lord? Watch. What do you do for faithfully serving the Lord? You are due to glory in his authority. That's what you are due. And so therefore, when the Lord honors your faithful service according to his delight in you, the reason he commands his spirit to work on your behalf is that he may cause you to glory in him as your God through causing you to possess things that are in the possession of those that serve other gods. Are you hearing me? When God rewards your service and establishes his covenant with you and blesses you, he will always add unto you by his spirit working on your behalf things that are in the hands or that are the possessions of those that serve other gods. Watch this. Let me make sure you get it. Watch. Listen to this. Listen. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. So watch. You will glory in the Lord being your God, that there is no other God beside him. How will you do that? Because he will increase you and bless you and establish his covenant with you by giving you land that's in the hand or occupied by those that serve other gods. He will cause you to possess the things of those who serve other gods. So when the Lord, when he rewards your faithful service, you know what, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to take you to a scripture. I'm going to give you a great understanding. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Psalm, Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs 13. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go back to Isaiah chapter 60. I thank you, Keisha. I just saw this. When you just popped it up there. Watch this. Go back to Isaiah chapter 60. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch this. 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 I want to make my point. You got Isaiah chapter 60? Watch this. Listen to this. Watch this. Okay, watch. Look at verse number 10. You got verse number 10? Okay, watch this. Do me a favor. Go to verse number 10 and circle the word favor. Go to verse 10 and circle the word favor. Listen. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath have I smote thee, but in my favor, listen to this, or in my delight. Are you listening? Have I had mercy on thee? Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. So wait a minute. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are those who don't believe in doing things God's way. It is those people that are serving other gods. So whose wealth is God giving you when he delights in you? He's giving you the wealth of those that are serving other gods. Why is he giving me the wealth of those that are serving other gods? So that he can be glorified in me as God of gods according to him causing me to possess the wealth by his spirit. Are you hearing me? Let me help you understand something. God could care less about the wealth 
in terms of making you wealthy. It's all about him being glorified in you through you possessing it by his spirit. Therefore, he's glorified in you as God of gods and giving you an understanding there is none else beside him. So where does the Lord separate himself from Allah? In the blessing. Where does the Lord separate himself from Buddha? In the blessing. Where does the Lord separate himself from all of the Hindu gods? In the blessing. Where does the Lord cause the atheist to have to rethink what he thinks about him? In the blessing. He in the blessing will cause an atheist to give you your wealth that he may be glorified as God. So where does God sanctify himself as God of gods and Lord of lords? In the blessing. That's why, hear me, that's why he causes you to possess the wealth of those that are serving other gods that he by causing you to possess it by his spirit may be glorified in you as God of gods. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Watch now. Let, now watch this. I want to go here now. I want to go here now. Proverbs. Proverbs. Watch this. This is going. This, somebody going. This is going to really help somebody. Are you hearing me? Watch. This is going to really help you. Proverbs thirteen twenty two. So now understand. Watch. This is really going to help somebody. Hear this. So you should never be, I'm, I'm going to say this, I want you to get this. When the Lord gives you your increase, hear this. When it comes time to reward your faithful service, the Lord, you know how you heard, you know how you've heard the scripture that he reigns on the just and the unjust? Well, wait a minute. How do you know who is just and who is unjust? Well, you find out who the just and the unjust are when it comes time to reward the just because he takes from the unjust and gives it to the just to justify those that have been serving him and to reveal those that are serving other gods. Are you hearing me? So now watch this. Proverbs 13, 22. You've heard, if, you, if you grew up in church, you heard it your whole life, but now you understand it. Listen. A good man leaveth inheritance to his children's children. Wait a minute. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So the just, watch this. The sinner are those that serve other gods. The just are those that serve the Lord. So the Lord takes from those that serve other gods and give to those that serve him that he may be glorified in those that serve him as God of gods. So are you understanding when it comes time for the Lord to establish his covenant with you or give you his bless or, or cause you to receive his blessing, he will always by his spirit give you things that are in the hand of those that serve other gods or give you land that is in the hand or that is occupied by those that serve other gods, that he by his spirit causing you to possess it, he may cause you be glorified in you and cause you to know that he is God of gods and there is none else beside him. Are you understanding? So hear me when I say this to you. The blessing of the Lord is the place where the Lord sanctifies himself as holy, as God of gods. So I, I want to make sure you understand that's where the Lord sanctifies himself uh, in, in the blessing. Let me give you one more witness. Go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Um, watch this. Watch, now watch, 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 watch. Joel chapter 2. Listen to this. I want you to get this. Now watch, watch, watch. 26, 27. 26 says, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt. So now watch, 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 watch. What is the praise that the Lord creates for himself? Because remember, the Lord creates his praise 
as he is increasing you. And the praise that he creates is that there is none else beside him and that you are God and that I am the Lord and there is none else. That's where he creates his praise in the blessing. Listen to him and you shall praise the Lord that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. So here's the question I have to ask you. So you think any kind of praise will do? No. The Lord makes it clear where he creates his praise. He creates his praise in the blessing of the Lord because through the Lord increasing you, he gives you the knowledge about himself that it pleases him to hear you praise him according to. Listen to what he says. Verse 27, and you shall know or have knowledge that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. So your God is Lord and there is none else beside him. But how you get this knowledge is that he causes you to possess the increase of those that serve other gods. This is how he gives you the knowledge that there is no other God beside him. Stop. Let me ask you a question. How did you think you were going to get that knowledge? Did you think you were going to get that knowledge about him by taking from other people that serve God? No. He takes from those that are serving other gods and gives to those that are serving him that he may give you the knowledge that he is God of gods. Why do you think he sent Moses down into Egypt to take the people from Pharaoh and then take Pharaoh's riches as well? That through Moses delivering the people, the Lord would be glorified in Moses as God of gods. Because then even the Egyptians would begin to say that Moses is God, is God. And where did God establish that? Through increasing Moses. He took from those that served other gods and gave to those that served him that by his spirit causing Moses to possess the people and the riches of Egypt, he was glorified in Moses as God of gods. Are you hearing me? Are you understanding? And I don't want to get too deep, but I'm, I'm watch. I'm, I'm going to help you real quick. So watch, I'm just throwing this in here for free. You can go do it on your, on your own, but watch. So what do you think happens when you go forward in the name of the Lord and prosper by the works of your own hands and you cause men to think that the Lord is equal with God? You can rest assured that everything you have built, the Lord will give it. He's setting you up to give it to someone that has been serving him. Are you hearing me? This is how the Lord judges the men that go forward in his name and they prosper it by the works of their own hands and call it God. Hence, causing men to believe that God is equal with men, the Lord then raises up one who is faithful and serves him through keeping his commandments. And he takes from those men that have been going forward in his name by the works of their own hand and he gives it to his faithful servant. Watch what I'm telling you. That's how heaven works. This is how heaven works. And let me go back. Let me, let me move forward. I just threw that in for free. And if you want to see how it works, go to Zephaniah chapter 1. You'll see how that works in Zephaniah chapter 1. But I'm going back to Exodus 23. So now understand, the Lord is going to bring his servant, listen, into the place of blessing by his spirit that he may be glorified in him as God of gods and establish that there is none else beside him. The Lord is set to reveal the truth about himself, that he is exceedingly greater than Allah, that he is exceedingly greater than Buddha, that he is exceedingly greater than all of the Hindu gods, that he is exceedingly greater than the atheist ever imagined him to be. But the Lord is set to be glorified as God of gods. Are you listening? Let's keep going. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. So now understand. Listen now. Watch this. What, 
When the Lord brings you into the place of blessing, listen, let me read this again. I want to make sure, I, I want you to hear this. And you shall serve the Lord your God. So understand, when the Lord brings you into the place of blessing, this is what he does for you. Hear this. Understand that he causes, he causes you to leave behind an old life and take on a new life. Understand, listen, when he brings you into the place of blessing, this is the place where he changes how you serve him. Understand, because he increases you to move you into a new position of service. Now listen carefully. Listen, he says, and you shall serve the Lord your God. So now understand, when the Lord brings you in, the purpose of blessing you is to deliver you or give you liberty. And understand, when the Lord blesses you, he changes how you serve him and he moves you into a new position. Understand, for a season, you serve the Lord through keeping his commandments. But when he delights in you, he blesses you and establishes his covenant with you to move you into a new position that you may serve him through showing people his word. You go from serving him through keeping his word to serving him through showing people his word. The Lord sees the blessing as merely a, a, nothing more than establishing or putting a robe or a garment on you to assure people that he is with you, that you may serve him by showing people his word. Are you hearing me? When the Lord delights in your service, he blesses you or establishes his covenant with you to change how you serve him and put you in a new position. The blessing of the Lord or the covenant of the Lord, it's the place where the Lord changes your life. When he brings you into this place to bless you, hear this. Hear this. This is the place where you go from lack to exceeding much and to overflow. In the place of blessing is the place where you go from lack to exceeding much to overflow. It is the place where the Lord changes how you serve him. And he causes you through the blessing to serve him through showing people his word. Hear me. I'm going to give you a few witnesses. I want you to understand this. For a season, you serve him through keeping his words or living by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. When the Lord delights in your service, he chooses you, establishes his covenant with you, or blesses you and moves you into a position where you now serve him by showing people his word. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch this. Watch this. Let me give you a few witnesses. I don't want you to miss this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 18. Watch now. Watch. Watch. I want you to see this because I need you to get this. It's in the blessing of the Lord that the Lord moves you in to leadership or moves you into serving him. Let me show it to you. Genesis 18, verse, let's, let, let me look at verse 17 through 19. Listen to what it says. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now watch. Verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and that shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. So now watch, verse 19. Because of the Lord's delight in Abraham, he blessed him and gave him sight. He increased him and gave him sight and showed him what heaven was doing. Now look at verse number 19. To do justice and judgment. And the purpose for blessing him was that Abraham could now serve the Lord through showing people his word. Are you getting it? The blessing of the Lord was the Lord increased Abraham and showed him what heaven, he gave him sight 
and showed him what heaven was doing in the earth. So the blessing allowed Abraham now to serve him through showing people the word of the Lord. When the Lord blesses you, the purpose of blessing you is to give you liberty that you can serve him and show people his word. That's the purpose of the blessing. That's the purpose of the covenant. It is to move you into a new position. The blessing of the Lord and the covenant of the Lord is the place where your life changes greatly. I want you, I'm going to say this to you again. Are you ready? The, ble the blessing of the Lord or the Lord establishing his covenant with you, this is the place where your life changes greatly. And what is the great change that the Lord makes in your life through blessing you and through establishing your covenant with you? He moves you into a new position of service and you begin to serve the Lord through showing people his word. For a season, you serve him through keeping his word and through living by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. When he finds you faithful and delights in your service, he blesses you, establishes his covenant with you to move you now into a position where you now serve him through showing people his word. Are you understanding how it works? Listen to the scripture. He's explaining, I'm going to show Abraham what I'm doing based on my delight in him that he may now serve me through showing people my word. Are you hearing me? Why didn't the heaven not hide from him what it was doing? So he can now serve heaven through showing people his word. Let me give you another witness. Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 19. Come on, Exodus chapter 19. I want you to get this now. Watch. I want you to get this. And this is something I need you to understand. I said this last week. I'm going to say it again, okay? I want you to get this. Watch. You're not God, and you're not as great as God. How great is God? His greatness is so great that he sees his blessing as a garment. The entire blessing he sees as a garment. And that garment, that blessing or that covenant is to cause people to be sure that he delights in you and that his word is with you that they may seek you out, that you may show them the word of the Lord. The covenant of the Lord or the blessing of the Lord is the beginning of you serving the Lord through showing people his word. Where does he make the change in your life and move you into ministry? He does it through the blessing and through his covenant. Are you understanding? Let me give you another witness. Watch this. Watch this. Exodus chapter 19, listen to verse number five and six. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, if you will obey my voice indeed, are you listening to me? Wait a minute. He's telling you if, you, if you will do the things that I command you to do, are you listening? If you will do the things that I command you to do and keep my covenant. So the only way that he will establish covenant with you is you're someone that Oh, watch this, obeys his voice. Listen, then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Listen to him. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So how do I become a priest of the Lord? He establishes me as a priest through his establishing his covenant with me. So he sees the covenant as a priestly garment. Are you hearing? He sees the increase of the Lord as a priestly garment. Are you hearing me? He sees the increase of the Lord as a priestly garment. So the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich. But the Lord sees the entirety of the riches as a garment to establish you as a priest. Are you getting it? Now watch this. Let's go to Malachi chapter 2. Watch this. Watch this. Somebody asked me, why does he put that garment on you, prophet? Why does he put that garment on you? I'm going to show you. <coughs> Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2. Watch this. Watch this. 
Malachi chapter 2. Listen to this. Verse number 7. It says, For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord. So now understand, why does he put that garment on you? He puts that garment on you according to his delight in you for the purpose of people seeking you out that you may show him their, his word. Are you listening? When he puts that garment on you, the purpose of putting that garment on you is to establish you to the people as a priest that they may seek you out and that you may show them his word. That garment makes you a messenger. And the only reason for putting that garment on you is because he desires for people to seek you out that he may show them his word. That garment allows you to begin serving the Lord as his priest. He's in showing people his word. Like, watch, 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 watch. Stop and think. Stop and think. Okay? God's not just, watch. He is increasing you to put a garment on you to assure people that you are his priest, that they can come to you with confidence that the words that you speak in his name are truth. That garment is to cause people to seek you out that you may show them the word of the Lord. So understand, the Lord blesses you and establishes his covenant with you that he may change how you serve him and put you in a new position that you may now serve him through showing people his word. Are you getting it? Wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Watch this. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Go to 1 uh, Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. Go to 1 Kings chapter 10. Go to 1 Kings chapter 10. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 10. Listen to this. Verse 24. Watch this. Before I read verse 24, I, I got I to gotta read 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. Watch this. I need you to go back to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. Then we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 10, 24, so you can get a good understanding. Watch now. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 says, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David's father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. So now watch now. Watch. The Lord delighted in Solomon because he loved him, right? So now watch what the Lord does. Watch. The Lord gives Solomon riches. But what are the, watch, wait a minute. The blessing of the Lord make it rich. So the riches were the garment. So the Lord says, because he says, ask me what I shall give you. He says, I want to give you an understanding that is hidden from other men. He says, I want to give you an understanding that is hidden from other men because I delight in your service because I know that you love me. So now I want to give you an understanding that's hidden from other men. So, but I want men to seek you out for that understanding. So I'm going to give you what you didn't ask me for. I'm going to put a garment on you. I'm going to give you riches because these riches by my hand or by my spirit. And remember what I told you at the beginning, how would he get those riches? Those riches, the Lord by his spirit would call Solomon to possess them from people that served other gods. So the Lord would put this garment on him through giving him riches to assure people that he was his priest, that they would seek him out, that Solomon may show them his word. Are you understanding how it works? The riches are a garment because the blessing of the Lord, remember, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, and thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee what? Wealth, or watch this, to wealth, Watch this, to establish his covenant with you. So the wealth of the Lord is him establishing his covenant with you or putting a garment on you. But that wealth, hear me, 
that wealth will always come by his spirit working on your behalf, causing you to possess the wealth of those that serve other gods. That's how he puts that garment on you. He causes people to see him increase you. But actually what they are seeing is they are seeing the Lord put a garment on you. And when he puts that garment on you, he is changing how you serve him. And he is moving you into a position that you now will serve him by showing people his word. So listen to 1 Kings chapter 10. Watch, 24, and all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. In truth, all the earth was seeking God according to the understanding that he had given Solomon. And by making him rich, the Lord established him as his priest, that people would now seek Solomon out, that Solomon would show them the word of the Lord. Are you understanding how heaven works? Do you realize, let me, I want to say this one more time. He, the Lord is exceedingly great. And trust me when I tell you this, take riches and put them next to the earth. Riches are very small when you think about the complexity of creating an earth. So therefore, these things will fade away. So they don't have the same value to God that they have to you because the Lord uses them differently than you use them. You use them to create a life for yourself. The Lord uses them to establish his priest that once you see him adding riches unto his priest, literally all you see him doing is putting a garment on him to assure you that he is his servant, that you in turn may seek him out, that he now may serve the Lord through showing you his word. Are you understanding how the kingdom of heaven works? Are you understanding how, 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 he, how he works? Because the Lord does not think like we think. He does not move like we move. And so understand, he is his witness. He made Solomon rich for the purpose of putting a garment on him or establishing his covenant with him to change how he served him and move him into a new position that he would show people the word of the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? And understand this, the Lord is going to bring his servant, the prophet, into the place of blessing and bless him for this purpose, to assure people that he is with him, that they may seek him out, that he may show them the word of the Lord. Now hear me, people are not going to be coming to this place because of the choir. They're not going to be coming to this place because it's close in proximity to their home. They're not going to be coming to this place because the people in there are the same color that they are. They're not going to be coming to this place because of the popularity of the leader. They will be coming to this place for one thing and one thing only. That is to seek the word of the Lord and to hear the word of the Lord. Are you hearing me? The Lord is going to establish a place where you can surely find his word and they will only be coming for the one thing, for the word of the Lord, to seek the word of the Lord and to hear the word of the Lord. Are you understanding what the Lord is teaching you? His purpose for establishing his covenant is to cause people to come to this place for nothing else but for the word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Let's keep going. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And he will, and he will bless thy bread and thy water. Understand this. Watch now. Watch. The Lord makes it very clear. I want you to listen to this. He makes it very clear that he blesses you in the place that he brings you into. Look at the scripture and go through your scriptures. He makes it very clear that he blesses you in the place that he brings you into. And I want you to understand, I'm going to say this again. This is the place 
where you will move in the place of blessing is the place where you move from lack to exceeding much and to overflow. And understand, the purpose for the Lord blessing you or establishing his covenant with you is deliverance or to give you liberty. I'm going to say this again. The purpose for the Lord blessing you or establishing his covenant with you is to give you liberty or to deliver you that you serve, that you be a servant to man in no capacity. I'm going to say it again. The purpose of the blessing of the Lord and the Lord establishing his covenant with you is to give you liberty and to deliver you that you are not a servant to man in any capacity. You know what? I just thought about something. I got to go back and say, I got to go back and put something in perspective. Then I'm going to come back to this. But let me go back up. I want to show you something. When the Lord in verse 23, when he says he brings you into the land by his spirit, hear this, because I don't want to forget this, because I just, as I was reading 25, I remembered it. Watch, listen. You must obtain the land by his spirit. You cannot obtain the land by a loan. You cannot obtain it by a group of people pooling their resources together. The reason you must obtain it by the Spirit of the Lord is that the Lord may deliver you from serving men through borrowing. And even if you as a group of people put your resources together to purchase land, you are still, the leader is still beholden to the people as a servant of the people and not a servant of God. Understand the purpose for the Lord causing you to obtain your increase by his spirit is that he may give you liberty and deliver you from being a servant. Now let's go back to 25 when he says, and he will bless the, thy bread and thy water because truly he makes it clear the blessing of the Lord only happens in the place where the Lord brings you into by his spirit. And the purpose of the blessing of the Lord and the Lord establishing his covenant with you is to deliver you and give you liberty that you are a are not a servant to man in any capacity. You want me to say it again? The purpose of the blessing of the Lord and the purpose of the Lord establishing his covenant with you is to give you deliverance. Are you hearing me? And to give you liberty that you are not a servant to man in any capacity. Are you understanding? That's the purpose. Let me give you, let me give you a few witnesses. First place I want to go. Watch. I want you to see it for yourself. First place I want to go. This is why. Watch. So let me ask you a question. Why do you think the Lord is blessing you? Why do you think he's blessing your bread and your water? That's because, listen. In the place of blessing is where you move from lack to more, watch this, to exceeding much to overflow because you have need of liberty and deliverance that the Lord will give you through blessing your provision. His purpose for blessing you, watch, for a season you are in lack. Why am I in lack for a season? Because he's trying your heart towards him through having you keep his commandments as, he, as you serve him in lack. Watch now. But once you are found faithful through serving him, through keeping his commandments in lack, he then moves you by his spirit or brings you by his spirit into the place of blessing or the place of covenant that he may bless you and establish his covenant with you to give you liberty and deliver you that you are a servant to that you are not a servant to man in any capacity that you may serve the Lord with no fear of man. Are you understanding? Let me give you a few witnesses. Let me help you understand. Let me give you a few witnesses. The first place I want to go is uh, 
Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 28. I want you to see this now. Open your eyes. Open your eyes and see. Listen now. Watch this. Verse number 12. Verse number 12. Watch this. Verse number 12 says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to heaven. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. I'm doing you a great disservice. Go back to verse number one. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. There it is. Once again, because remember we read in Exodus 19 and 5 where it says that if you will obey my voice indeed, same thing. Listen, that if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Listen to what he says, verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season. Listen, and to bless all the work of thine hand. So now watch what the Lord does. He gives you a good understanding of the blessing of the Lord. Pay attention. Listen, he says, and you shall lend unto many nations and thou shall not borrow. So his purpose for blessing you or establishing his covenant with you. He don't want you serving men through borrowing. So he makes sure that through blessing you, he eradicates all borrowing out of your life and delivers you and gives you liberty from being a servant through borrowing. Listen to him. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. So how does he make me the head and not the tail? He does it through blessing me. So his purpose for blessing me is to assure that I am not a servant to man in any capacity. He wants to put me in a position where I am free to serve only him by showing people his word. Watch now, watch. And watch this. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. Wait, wait, wait. That's deliverance. Once again, he needs me in a certain position. But to get me in that position, he has to bless me. So the blessing gives me liberty that I'm not under any man. Are you hearing me? I'm not under any man. But I'm in a position where I am not a servant to man in any capacity. Now, if you're over there thinking kind of small, then you serve a small God. But the God that I serve is exceeding great. And he can only declare exceeding great things. Because everything he does after I show him I'm worthy of the blessing is to give me knowledge of his exceeding greatness. Are you understanding? So therefore, he puts me through the blessing in a position where I'm not a servant to a man in any capacity. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Where, where, watch this, watch this, dude. Deuteronomy 28. Now watch this. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. Do Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Watch this. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Luke chapter 1. Listen to this. Luke chapter 1 verse... What I want? Verse 74. Listen to this now. Look at verse 74. Listen to what he says. No, I got to go 72 through 74. Watch. 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Listen. Listen to the covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered. So wait a minute. We being delivered. So what's the purpose of establishing his covenant with me or blessing me? It's to give me deliverance. It's to give me deliverance. Listen to, listen to Zechariah as he testifies about the goodness of the Lord. That the purpose of the covenant is to give me deliverance. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Are you understanding? The Lord 
when he blesses you or establishes his covenant with you, the purpose is to give you liberty that you may serve him without fear of man. That's the only reason. Watch this. Watch. When the Lord is blessing you, you have need of deliverance. You have need of liberty. What's the purpose? That you may be delivered out of the hand of men that you are not a servant to man in any capacity. That you may serve the Lord without fear of men in holiness and in righteousness. That's the purpose of the blessing. That's the purpose of establishing his covenant with you. It's to give you liberty. He's not just increasing you or making you wealthy just to make you wealthy. He has a purpose. And his purpose for your wealth is deliverance. His purpose for your wealth is liberty. And what is he giving you that liberty or that deliverance for? It's to serve him without the fear of men. Are you following me? Let me go back. Let's, let's go back. Let me go back to Exodus, uh, watch this, 23, so I can watch this. And hear this, I want you to understand. And what the Lord is going to do is he's going to establish his covenant or, or his blessing with his servant that he would give him liberty, that he may serve him in this place through showing people his word and that he would not be a servant to man in any capacity. He will cause this to be a place of deliverance. Are you understanding? He will cause this to be a place of deliverance. I'm done right here. Here's the last part. Listen to this. Watch this. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Watch this. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Understand this. The Lord's making it very clear that the place he purposes to bring his servant into will be a place of deliverance. Hear me. Write this down. The Lord makes it very clear that the place he purposes to bring his servant into into to serve him through showing people his word will be a place of deliverance. And understand this, write this down. The purpose for the Lord delivering you out of the hand of the enemy, and that's from sickness or disease, is that you may serve him. Hear me. The purpose of the Lord I, I, I want to say this very carefully because I told you at the top, I need those that have been petitioning the Lord and seeking the Lord concerning their body. This word is for you. Hear me. The purpose of the Lord delivering you from sickness and disease is that you may serve him. The purpose of deliverance is service. Hear me. That's why there is an appointed time. Are you hearing me? That's why there is an appointed time to deliver those that are in the hand of the enemy by sickness and disease. That's why there is an appointed time to deliver those that are oppressed by the devil through sickness and disease because the purpose of deliverance is service. The Lord delivers you out of the hand of the enemy for the purpose of serving him. And let me give you a few witnesses. I want you to understand the purpose of deliverance, whether it be by his covenant or whether it be by his blessing or whether it be by the hand of his servant to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. The purpose is service. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Let's go first to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Hear me now. Hear me. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Listen to this. Listen to this. Now watch this. Verse 15. I want you to look at verse 15. It says, And the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses. Listen to this. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt 
which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So now listen, now watch, 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 watch. Now go back up to verse 13. Watch this, verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore unto thy fathers. He will keep unto thee the covenant. Circle the word covenant. Watch now. And being delivered from sicknesses is part of the covenant. Now understand why. Because deliverance is about service. And the covenant of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord is about deliverance. So therefore, the purpose of deliverance is service. So the reason that the Lord will deliver those that are sick from being oppressed by the devil through sickness and disease is service. Hear me. So when the Lord, write this down because this is good. When the Lord delivers someone from sickness and disease by the hand of his servant, watch what he's doing. He is adding unto his servant increase from those that are serving another God. Watch, he's taking from the devil and adding unto his kingdom for the purpose of revealing his delight in his servant and establishing his covenant with his servant. Deliverance is about service. So that's why God delivers those that are sick and have diseases, that they may serve him. Let me give you a few witnesses. Watch, I want you to get it. I want you to understand. Watch now, because... If you, understand, if you want to know, watch, why the Lord delivers people that are sick, why he says, and I will take all sickness from the midst of thee, let me help you understand something. God does not deliver those that are sick and that have diseases for the purpose of wowing you or the purpose of causing you to be in awe or to show, watch this, or to boast about himself. No, deliverance is about service. And the purpose for delivering them is that they may serve the Lord. He delivers you out of the hand of the enemy that you may serve the Lord. Watch. Deuteronomy. I mean, not Deuteronomy. Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter. Uh, first, I want to go to Exodus chapter 8. I want you to see it. Exodus chapter 8. Watch this. You better listen because this is good. Exodus chapter 8. Listen to verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, going to Pharaoh. Say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. So watch, what was the purpose of deliverance? The purpose of deliverance was so that people could serve the Lord. But they were oppressed or they were in the hand of the enemy. And the Lord delivered them out of the hand of the enemy for the purpose of them serving him. Watch, he make it clear. Exodus 9, 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. So once again, he's teaching his purpose for delivering the people out of the hand of the enemy was that they may serve him. So when you hear the Lord say, And I will take all sickness away from the midst of thee, the purpose of the deliverance is that the people may serve the Lord. Are you understanding? He's taking from one and adding unto another. Let me give you one more. Let me give you a couple of more witnesses. I want you to get this one. I want you to get this one. Watch now. Watch. I want. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Watch this. This is good. Matthew chapter 4. Listen to this. Watch now. Watch. Somebody say deliverance. Deliverance. Watch this. Matthew chapter 4. Watch. Matthew chapter 4. Listen to this. Verse 23. And then I'm going to read 25. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Listen to this. Verse 25. And there followed him. The big word is followed. Listen. The big word is followed. Because watch now, the deliverance of the Lord delivered the people. Watch this. It delivered them out of the hand of the enemy and caused them no longer to follow the ways of the world, but to follow Jesus 
and serve the Lord. That's what the deliverance of the Lord did. It set them free and caused them to serve God. Hear me. Deliverance is all about the Lord causing you to serve him. So the purpose for delivering you from the sickness or disease that you are bound by, because watch, any disease or any sickness that is impossible for men to deliver you from, you are bound by it. And when the Lord has his servant deliver you from a sickness or disease that is impossible for men to deliver you from, he delivers you out of the hand of the enemy for the purpose of serving him. Are you understanding? That's the purpose of deliverance because healing is merely nothing more than deliverance. But the purpose of deliverance is to serve him and to add to his kingdom. Do you understand when Jesus was, watch, what did I tell you? The covenant is about deliverance, right? For the purpose of serving the Lord. Well, when Jesus was walking about delivering the people from the sicknesses, the Lord was adding, watch this, was establishing his covenant with Jesus through adding people to him through deliverance. So therefore, the Lord was creating a gathering that was impossible for men to create because this gathering was, he added unto him through delivering those that were oppressed of the devil for the purpose of causing them to serve him and adding them to Jesus to establish his covenant with him. Here go my last witness. This is good. I want you to see this. Watch this. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And I'm going to be done. John chapter 10. Watch this. The purpose of deliverance. So understand now. Watch. Now watch. Hear me. Hear me. God is not delivering people from sickness and disease to wow you, to cause you to be in awe or to impress you. The purpose. Watch. Now watch. So why? Listen now. I'm going to say this again. Covenant, the blessing of the Lord is, watch, the purpose, one of the purposes is to deliver you. Watch, that you may serve the Lord. But when the Lord has a servant deliver those that are oppressed of the devil, hear this, through sickness and disease, that oppression is, watch, that deliverance is to cause them to serve the Lord and that the Lord through the deliverance would establish his covenant with his servant by adding people unto him. Are you getting it? Watch, listen. John chapter 10, verse 27. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. This is going to really help somebody. Listen to verse 27. Watch this. What, what color are the words? They're red. Who's doing the talking? Watch this. The prophet. What is he sharing? A secret concerning the kingdom of heaven. Listen to what he says. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Watch this. This, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Not shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. Watch. My Father who gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Watch. I know them, and they follow me. So now watch. When he says they know my voice, what voice is he talking about? The voice Jesus is talking about is the voice of the miracles and the wondrous works that he did in the name of the Lord. Listen, and the miracles that he did were delivering those that were bound by the enemy through sickness, through disease, and through death. But those, watch this, and the voice was from those miracles, and that voice is what called his sheep out of darkness. The voice that they heard was the voice of the miracles. And that voice is what called them out of darkness and caused them to serve the Lord and allow the Lord to add them unto him. Are you hearing me? Because I know you've been in church forever and you heard my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Well, what was the voice? The voice was of the miracles of the wondrous works that he did in the name of the Lord. And the voice, the miracles were him delivering those that were oppressed of the devil through sickness and disease. 
And through those miracles, he was calling his sheep out of darkness, that they would turn from darkness and serve the Lord, and the Lord added them unto him. Are you understanding how heaven works? The purpose of deliverance is service. So all of you that are afflicted in your body through the infirmities of the enemy, the Lord is set to establish a place of deliverance. And hear me, the only way you can be delivered is you have to call upon the Lord through a servant that he has established his presence with. And the purpose of establishing that servant is that you may call upon him through humility and be delivered that you may serve him. The Lord is set to establish a place of deliverance that by the hand of his servant, he will deliver those that are oppressed of the devil through sickness and disease, that through the voice of the miracles, he will cause his he will call his remnant and deliver them that they may serve him. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say it one more time. The Lord is set to establish a place of deliverance that all that called upon him through his servant will be delivered. And through the miracles of deliverance, the Lord will call, through the voice of the miracles, the Lord will call the remnant and will deliver them that they may serve him. Hear me. The enemy cannot hold these people because the voice of the miracle is what going to call them. And they will come and the Lord will deliver them and cause them to serve him as he creates a gathering of deliverance. The gathering will represent deliverance because he will call through the voice of the miracles to the remnant and call them out of darkness and deliver them. Somebody say amen. The Lord is set to establish a place of deliverance. So those that are suffering in their bodies from diseases that are impossible for men to deliver them from, the Lord is about to call you and deliver you that you may serve him. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Go back over it. Trust me. Listen to this word. To many that hear this, the Lord will affirm for you in your dreams that this place is set to come. And when you hear, come, for surely the Lord shall deliver you if you call upon him. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We bless you for sure that truly your ways are not our ways. We thank you for this set time of deliverance. And we give you glory, Lord, that you are set to loose the prisoners from darkness through the voice of miracles. We thank you, God, that there is none that thinks like you. We thank you for deliverance. We bless you right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God